Many artists often find limits of 3ds Max and add them, end up getting extensions and add-ons and other things to help them finish their task. The technically inclined people write scripts and even plugins, while others Google for third-party solutions and then try to fit them together into something that does the job closely enough. With our tool called Lab, we hope to give you some help should you find yourself hitting a brick wall. Maybe you had some ideas for a new plugin, but couldn't get yourself to realize it because the learning curve for the plugin and script writing is just too steep. Or maybe you are just interested in new ways of working with 3ds Max altogether. In any case, over the next few videos I will try to my best to give you a crash course into what the lab does and how you can start using it right away. Even though we can extend many aspects of 3ds Max, I will concentrate on generating geometry first. Later on, I will introduce you to other corners of the lab as you become more familiar with its convention. I assume that you installed lab from our website already, however, if you didn't, you can do so by going to ethere.com and downloading a copy right now. There is a video outlining the install process should you require more assistance. With the installation out of the way, Let's start 3ds Max. You will not see anything too different from the default user interface. However, if you start browsing through the Create Panels and other plugin sections, you can quickly discover the lab. For example, here in the Geometry drop-down, you see a new section called Ethere Lab Templates. Likewise, if I just create a geometry object to modify and then go to the Modify panel, we can see a new modifier called Geometry Modifier. So you can see similar kind of uh, additions to 3ds Max UI throughout its uh, various corners and UI elements, and each one of these new plugin types essentially is a lab template, and it allows you, it's a placeholder for you to create lab plugins. So in this tutorial we're going to be creating a polygon mesh and therefore we're, in, we're interested in creating geometry. So for our very first crash course into the lab, I was thinking of doing something very simple and really the simplest thing I'd, I can come up with is doing a plain geometry object. If I create 3ds Max as default plane object in the viewport, you can see why it is so simple. Basically, we just have four vertices, uh, or rather a mesh consisting of four vertices joined together by a face. And in this case, we have more than one face or polygons. And uh, for our tutorial, we'll just use one face con uh, or polygon that joins all those four uh, all those four vertices together. So. Let me delete this this 3ds Max plane and we can start creating our own plane completely from scratch and completely by, play, by hand using the lab. At first, let's familiarize ourselves a little bit about the geometry of what we're going to create. So I'm just going to set up a basic X and Y axis graph. We don't need to concern ourselves with the Z axis because we're just creating a two-dimensional plane and I will label this axis as X and Y so it's more clear. And this is the positive end of X and Y, and these are the negative ends of this axis. Our plane will consist of four vertices, and each vertex will reside in its own quadrant of this axis system. So our first vertex is going to be here, second one is going to be here, third one is here, and fourth one is going to be here. And let's just enumerate them uh, so we can keep track later on about the order of creation of these vertices. And note that I'm starting from zero instead of one. Uh, in, I know in Max script uh, a lot of the indices are one based, so you always start with one, but in the lab you always start with zero. And as a result the last index is three and not four. So lastly we will create a polygon that will join these vertices like this in this particular order, and we will have our own kind of plane going on. So now with this out of the way, I hope it's clear enough, um, let's go in and create a new lab template. We, I go to geometry object and we have a geometry here, a uh, geometry button which I can use to create a template for lab geometry and it by default it creates a locator inside the viewport. It's just located at the origin of the coordinate system and it's nothing special. It doesn't have any mesh representation or any kind of visual representation inside the viewport. And if you go into the modify panel it contains my input which is a 
a parameter and it doesn't really do anything at the moment if you change it there is nothing happening and the reason is there really is just to give you kind of a something something to have uh, to, to help you get started with your plugin but it's not connected or, or it doesn't have any function by default above it we have edit plugin button and this is the button that we will click to get our lab window to open this is basically workspace where we will be creating our plugin and in here we have a whole bunch of different controls but let's ignore everything above here and below uh, ignore everything except for the schematic view which is at the center and the schematic view is really where we construct we will construct our plugin we will start by adding the polygon mesh node which will contain vertices and polygons and uh, to do that, I'm going to right click in the view and when I do that, I see a, we will see a pop-up which asks for text input and in here I can basically type the, the object that I want to create. So I'm going to type polygon mesh and as I type, I'm going to be presented with a whole bunch of choices for different types of entities that I can create inside the lab window. We are interested in creating polygon mesh, so I'm going to click the second option from above which will create a polygon mesh node. And as you can see, it takes vertices as one input and polygons as the other input, which is exactly what we were drawing in our in our paint application before. So to, to pipe in into vertices, I need four vertices representing each, each corner of our polygon mesh. And to do so, I need to create a node for each one of those vertices. So I will right click again and uh, vertices inside the lab are denoted as vector 3, which just means they're, they're a vector in three-dimensional space. Uh, and to create a vector 3, I just need to type vector 3.create. And it's giving me three options. Basically, uh, this, these are three different ways to create a vector 3. The first one is what we need. It takes three coordinates, which is x, y, and z, and it creates uh, a vector at those coordinates. And because we're specifying the values manually, we will need this exact constructor over here. So it takes three inputs, X, Y, and Z, which you can spe specify by hand. And uh, it produces, as a result, a vector three object. So I'm, I'm just going to rename this node to vertex zero. And I'm going to copy, which is control C and paste, which is used uh, through control V to create a copy of this node. And I'm going to create actually three more copies. So I have all my vertices created uh, right here. And I'm, I'm going to rename them to kind of so we don't lose track of them in the future. And they're going to correspond to the same names that I used inside the drawing previously. Each one of the vertices that we created is currently located at the origin of the coordinate system, which is 0, 0, and 0. And what we want to do for the next step is to kind of offset them into their respective quadrants of, of the coordinate system, just like we did in our drawing. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the drawing and we need to decide what kind of coordinates we want to assign to each one of these points. Uh, let's first look at the vertices inside our drawing and for, uh, we can notice that the first vertex is located both to the negative side of the x-axis and to the negative side of the y-axis. So we'll just mark it as negative and negative. Then the first vertex or rather the second vertex is located to the negative side of the x-axis and positive side of the y-axis. The third vertex is po both positive x and positive y and the last vertex is positive x and negative y. Just for the sake of, of uh, I guess, simplicity and just because I know the, the units inside the viewport, let's push them 10 units uh, apart from each, from the center of our coordinate system. And uh, as a result, our first vertex is going to have both coordinates negative, so it's going to have negative 10 here and negative 10 for Y coordinate. Uh, this uh, vertex 1 is going to have positive, negative X, positive Y, so negative 10 and positive 10. Then the next vertex contains both positive x, uh, positive x coordinate and positive y coordinate. Oops. So if I go back, positive y coordinate and the last coordinate, uh, last vertex contains, I believe, positive x and negative y. 
this completes our kind of uh, vertex loop. One thing that you will notice now is that if I try, if I think about wiring this node into the vertices of polygon mesh, there could be a problem because vertices of polygon mesh accept more than one vertex and we kind of want to wire all four of these into one port over here. Well, the lab allows you to actually wire individual objects into inputs that accept a collection of objects, which is more than one object, and it automatically creates an array of these objects for you. Let me demonstrate. So if I drag the output of vertex zero, uh, I can right away see that uh, all the in inputs that are compatible with it, uh, and I can now wire it into vertices. So by doing so, it creates a roll down and uh, it assigned our first vertex, vertices number zero name. And if I do the same for the second vertex, I can also add it into the vertices array. And then I can do the same thing for the third vertex. And I can do the same thing for the last vertex as well. So this actually creates our vertices. And let's minimize the nodes for now and push them out of the way because we know that they are set up. And the next thing that we will concentrate on is creating our polygons. In our case, like I mentioned before, we're just using one polygon. So to create a polygon, we do the same routine as before. We right click and we select polygon. And it offers us to create a polygon mesh just like before because polygon, the word polygon, is part of the uh, name polygon mesh. But really what we're looking for to creating is polygon mesh dot polygon. And again, it has four or rather five different create methods. So let me narrow this down by doing polygon dot create. So you can see all five different create methods. We're interested in the one that says uh, I, that inside the brackets contains I innumerable integer. Basically, uh, these objects are, are .NET objects and in .NET's uh, language or in C Sharp, the I innumerable means that it is a collection of multiple integers in this case. And this is exactly what we're looking for. It, each integer will be an index for the vertex that we will be specifying for our polygon mesh. So for now, let's again create a polygon that takes I innumerable of integers. So I'm going to create second from the top. And now we have our polygon, which we can wire into the polygons output. Our polygon is in turn taking its own collection of objects for input. And this collection is actually of type integer, which we just discussed. So we need to create, just like we created four vertices to uh, specify the positions of each vertex. Now we need to create four integers to specify the index of each vertex, or this is needed actually to specify the order in which we want these vertices to appear. Uh, to create integers and floating point values and Boolean values, is, it is slightly different process than creating vertices or polygons. Because these objects are not inherently its own class, uh, it is more of a primitive type, we will need to create a constant node. And to do so, I'm going to right click to bring up the menu again, and I'm going to select constant. And constant with a couple of triangular brackets is the only choice we get, so we're going to create it. And as you can see now, it contains this weird arrow here, uh, arrow control inside the input. And the reason for that is that this node is something that we will refer to as a, as a generic node. And basically being a generic node means that it can take any kind of input and uh, be, it can take a vertex tree, it can take uh, integer float values, it can even take a polygon mesh as an input. So if I drag this out, you can see it's available for me to plug in. Just like if I if I drag out this vertex tree value, it's available. And, uh, and it produces exactly the same value. And the reason why this is useful is because now we can right click and we can specify that we want to, this to be an integer, which is just denoted as int for short. And all of a sudden, we are able to enter an integer value here. So I'm going to rename this node uh, as our vertex index, vertex zero index. And I'm going to, uh, just like with the vertices, I'm going to copy and paste it three times to create four copies of it. And I'm going to change the index of each one of these indices to respective vertex index. So this is going to be zero vertex, one, this is going to be two, and the last one is going to be three. And let me just quickly rename this node so it's visually, visually makes sense 
um, of what nodes are doing. And it is generally a good idea to rename nodes because later on, uh, once you have many, many nodes in a very dense graph structure, you start to forget what uh, is the functionality of which node and what is its purpose. And naming really helps uh, when it comes down to that. So if I select this output now, it's an integer, but remember we can pipe a uh, single value values into inputs that take arrays of the same value. So in this case, this one takes a collection of integers and we can pipe a single integer to create an array of integers. Uh, and now we do the same thing for the rest of them. And the last index. And this looks like we are set with our mesh. So let's take the output of our final mesh and and we're going to connect it to the output port. This is the only output port that uh, we have currently in our graph besides the add port. And uh, this is the only output port we really need to be concerning us, ourselves with uh, for for my, many of the tutorials that are going to happen for the lab. So I'm just going to drop it here. And as you can see, we have a nice plain object inside the viewport. So to finalize this, I can close this view. And now we have a standalone object of type geometry, which is a plane object. And we can add other max geometry modifiers on top of it. As a last step, let me just quickly save the scene. And I'm going to save the scene as plane one. So this is it. And uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to learn how to actually use user inputs to specify the width and the height for our planes.